Good morning to those of you out there on the West Coast. Good afternoon to those of you here on the East Coast with me. We're going to get rocking and rolling in just a couple of minutes. Um, I'm glad to see everybody getting engaged in the chat. The chat isn't just with me and my team coming back, but it's so that you can network with each other. So that's awesome. Uh, by the way, you should see when you're in the LinkedIn Live, especially if you're in LinkedIn, right? If you're in YouTube, welcome, but come on over to LinkedIn because you can network with people. There should be a networking tab that allows you to make connections with others who are in um, training here today. So it's one of the most powerful things about you attending training is that you get this chance to be able to uh, meet with other people. Obviously the most powerful thing is, you know, the ability to learn from me. Um, okay, let me just hide some of the caption. I like to start off as a, uh, giving you a tip, as a thank you for those showing up early and on time. We have almost 200 people showing up early and on time. I really appreciate that. This is a community that we just keep making stronger and stronger. And so my tip for you today is to ask for uh, advice. It's a great way to build a relationship. And what I mean by this is that um, if I have a capability statement, for example, I might go to a small business specialist and instead of driving straight into trying to get something, I show my capability statement when I'm meeting with them. I say, hey, do you have any advice on how I might improve this? Do you have any advice on how I might learn more about your agency. Sure, Neil, you should be reading this or, or go to this thing or attend a vendor outreach session, whatever it is. If you get advice from other people, they appreciate that you're asking and listening and they really appreciate it when you go and do something. Anna Ehrman, who's now at the Department of Veterans Affairs, used to be at State Department and before that was at the um, PTAC for Virginia. And she said this in one of the uh, sessions she and I had where I was interviewing her, her and, and several other PTAC pros from around the country. But anyways, I said, what's the one last and best piece of advice you would leave small businesses when interacting with PTACs or other mentors like that? And she said, just do what we say. And it's the same thing with the federal buyer. When you're in there talking with them and you're getting their advice, if you do what they, they say, they feel this urge to want to do more. They're kind of be committing to your success. And so that's my tip for those of you showing up early and on time is just seek advice and then, you know, follow that advice too, as you go forward. It's a great way to build a relationship. Again, thanks a lot for those of you showing up early and on time. That was just a tip for you. We're going to get into the formal training now. If you're a small business in the federal market, it can be difficult sometimes trying to figure out where the opportunities are coming from. How do you find those ideal opportunities that your company can pursue, right? And I get asked all the time, it's like, as a government contractor, how can I find opportunities in the federal market? I know there's SAM, but there's got to be other ways, right? How can I do it? And you can definitely find opportunities on the long range acquisition forecast. You can find RFPs that have dropped. Um, I've done a lot of training about how you can find opportunities by building relationships out there. So there's many different ways. There's tools like GovWin, for example, that you could use if you're, if you're paying for those types of subscriptions. But my favorite way, and the way I'm going to talk about today, is to find contracts and contract vehicles to pursue. Um, and when you find those, you want to find out who's winning, right? If you can find your competitors and what your competitors are winning and then chase those and pursue those opportunities, it's one of the best ways to find opportunities. And that's what I'm going to dig into deeply today. Um, government contractors need to pursue enough opportunities, you know, having enough opportunities in your pipeline in order to achieve those sales goals you're trying to uh, reach. And that's what we're going to cover down on in today's training about the easiest ways. Let me switch over to my slides here. Easiest way to find federal opportunities, right? There's a lot of different ways. I'm going to talk about one of my most favorite ways, the easiest way, and it's what I use with my customers right now. So I'm going to tell you literally how I'm doing my job for my customers later today, right? After this training, I go back to the paid side of my job and on, uh, on there, I'm helping my customers fill their pipeline with slam dunk opportunities. And that's what I'm going to teach you today, how to do what I do. So uh, we're going to cover down on three main topics today. We've got 30 minutes to push through. The first thing is I want to talk to you about the importance of pursuing your competitors. And what do I mean by that? Um, and then how do you pursue? How do you even find your competitors? How do you pursue them? I was watching uh, something recently today or Friday. I can't, can't remember. It's all blending together. But they said, you need to do this. You need to do this. And while I was watching, I kept saying, how? <laughs> how do I do that? And um, I try to make sure in this training, you've got the how coming out of pursuing your comp competitors. And then I'm going to talk about how do you find the contracts you wish you won, but those competitors did. And then we'll wrap up with um, after you do find these contracts, right? These slam dunk opportunities that you wish you had won, but your competitor did. What do you do next? 
And I'm going to give you some steps to take on doing that. If this sounds like what you're hoping to hear in today's training, do me a favor, put GovCon rocks into the chat. Let's me know you're listening, that you, uh, you're you looking forward to the topic. And also, whenever you do that, just to be really clear, LinkedIn pushes the word out and says, hey, we got an active community over here. You should come join these uh, 200, it's almost 300 people right now in our live. Um, and so bring more people in by engaging. Okay, if you don't know who I am, my name is Neil McDonald. I'm the president of the GovCon Chamber of Commerce, and I want to welcome you to my federal sales training where I provide tips for success in the federal market. I spent 20 years in the federal market as a small business owner. And since 2018, I've been teaching people like you that government contracting is not a secret. It's just a process. When we follow a process A to Z, we're going to have repeatable, uh, predictable results. And that's what I want for you. I want your company to be able to have a repeatable, predictable pipeline that leads to revenue. And it begins with things like finding um, opportunities that are just perfect for you. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to my newsletter. It's the Government Contracting Success Newsletter. It's the largest one on LinkedIn and it grows daily. And this is where we put a lot of good information. Um, I was just putting information in there this morning. I dropped a new issue. And in there, we put in some extra uh, information you might have missed about DOD and some strategic plans, um, some stuff from DLA, as well as DLA has got a new executive director of small business. That's really important if you're trying to sell into uh, DLA and the Department of Defense to know who she is. And so that kind of information we put into the newsletter. The last thing I wanted to say before we get going is um, thank you. I really wanna thank those of you who registered for today's training, right? When you register ahead of time, it's the simplest way to say thank you to us. And we really, really appreciate it. So thank you back, right? And the other thing is when you register, LinkedIn then says, hey, this looks like a pretty um, well-attended training, maybe you'd be interested. So they push this out to others in the government contracting world, including um, all the people I'm connected to, whether it's uh, federal buyers, small business, large business in the community, and all of those people who help us uh, small businesses. So thank you for registering. If you haven't already done so, we got four more trainings lined up for the rest of February here and one for the beginning of March there at Friday. Go register for them. Sign up. Let, let us know that you're attending. Okay, so I have a few slides I want to share, and then the bulk of the training I want to try to spend inside of um, some of the tools, the government tools, so that way you see exactly what I'm doing. So the first thing I want you to understand is when I say pursue your competitors, I am being a little cutthroaty here, right? I am being, um, that's what sales is. I heard this great line, or at least I think it's a great line. You tell me if you kind of agree. But um, it was on a TV show, but it's appropriate. With, right now we're in the presidential season, and um, somebody said to uh, about a candidate for president. It's like, wow, you know, who are they? They're pretty arrogant to think they could be president of the United States. And and the other person looked and said, well, that's kind of what you want is a, le a little bit of arrogance for the person who thinks they can take on the most powerful role in the world, right? Kind of thing. And for a while there, I thought I could be president and then I got my arrogance in check. But my point is sales is kind of that same thing, right? Is um, you need to have a little bit of energy and push to go get it. So going after your competitor wins is a good thing. You want to find those contracts your competitors have won and then take them away from them. Take them fair and, and uh, you know, they say all is fair in love and war and, and all is fair in government contracting too. You you pursue it. You respond to an RFI. You try to get in and have uh, early conversations. You respond to an RFP with a proposal. That's what I mean by take. And I don't mean anything bad. I just mean Go try to beat out your competition. But it's really good when you can find the buyers who are already buying, right? And so I said, sell to those who are buying. Don't ever, ever convince anyone. In sales, people will say yes and no. You want to get those no's as fast as possible and make those be a one minute meeting, right? You don't want to spend an hour or days or months talking to an agency you're trying to convince to buy what you sell, right? Instead, go find the agencies who are buying from your competitors and show them that you're the better option. Sell to those who are already buying. Um, here's a couple of steps on how you can pursue your competitors. And I'm gonna talk about this. Uh, I'm gonna show you literally how to go find those competitors. But the first thing I always want to make sure you're clear of is you must have a clear focused offer. So for example, today's, um, today's training, I'm gonna use American Sign Language, ASL, as my company. 
I got a competitor who does that. I mean, it's competitor. I have a customer who does that. And I, and I figure I'll use them and their need during my training. So this will be a real world exercise that I can take at the end of my training, which is live right now on the 26th of February, right? I'm gonna show you how I do my job literally. And so it begins though uh, by having a clear focused offer. Down in Texas, I, I got another customer who does AWS software development. Uh, we've got a customer that does elevator services and maintenance, right? Have a clear focused offer because when you have that, it makes it so much easier for you to have uh, keywords that you're going to be searching on and you know the NAICS code that probably is best for your uh, what you sell, right? That kind of thing. So number one, have a clear focused offer. Number two, remember that contract vehicles can lead to competitors. So an example is say I do emerging technology like artificial intelligence or maybe some advanced um, data analytic type stuff, whatever it is. Well, I might go into the uh, 8A Stars 3 contract vehicle. It has three pools. It has a pool for, you know, basically total 8A IT services. It's got one for emerging technology and one for uh, OCONUS, which stands for outside the continent of the United States. If you don't know this, the continent of the United States is the 48 states that are all together. So everything else is OCONUS, outside of con uh, continent of the United States. Anyway, so I would look at that pool that's, I think it's like 200 companies, 300 companies, that one on that pool, well, now I'm finding competitors and I can find their names and I can pursue them. So contract vehicles can lead me to competitors. There's a contract vehicle called um, HCATS that is uh, basically human capital, right? And I mean, literally is human capital. I can go in there and see the companies and I think maybe there's 22, 50 companies, small amount, I can just find them all and go see what they're winning. And now I can begin to pursue that. I'm not just pursuing what they're winning on the contract vehicle. Through the contract vehicle, I find out who my competitor is. By doing what I'm gonna show you in a minute, I'll be able to find out what are they winning beyond just this HCAT or just this contract vehicle. Hopefully that makes sense. And the third thing you wanna do is you wanna build that list of competitors. You wanna make sure you have a list of, you know, start off with 20 to 50 competitors that sh and if they're winning, that should be more than enough to help you identify opportunities you want to put in your pipeline. So uh, the next thing is finding contracts that you wish you won. So we're here, we're really diving in um, to, to these contracts that are important. So I said, I'm going to use American Sign Language. ASL is my keyword. And I just want to kind of set this up for a second. Um, the, the second, the other keywords I might use, right? Deaf, hard of hearing. Uh, translation services, interpretation services. Some of these will move forward. I'm not going to use all of them in today's training, but the idea is I've got some of my top keywords. You want to do this same exercise, right? Write down the top keywords, three to five keywords that really nail what you do. So I talked about an uh, AWS software development firm. They might just look for AWS or Amazon Web Service, and that should be enough to find competitors who are winning. And then you can put down NAICS codes, which I clearly forgot to do in my preparation, but who cares? Because <laughs> I'll show it to you in a second. I'll show you how quickly I can find the NAICS code, right? Um, and then I'm gonna show you through these three different tools how I do this and how I find opportunities that can literally uh, be racked and stacked and I can decide which ones are best to go into my pipeline. Before I do though, what are your, what's like your top keyword? If it was AWS, like I mentioned, or ASL or Elevator, what is your top keyword? Put that in the chat if you're feeling generous while I line up. Um, let's start with Sam. Okay, so we're going to head into Sam.gov and um, I'm going to go fast. This is not a training on how to use these tools. You can always come back and watch the replay at uh, you know one quarter speed <laughs> to see this, but I'm going to move very fast in the search because that's not what I want to show you. I want to show you the results, right? So I'm just clicking on the search tab. When I get to the search, it says select domains. I'm going to choose contract opportunities. And then really, when I come down, the first thing I'm going to do is just type in ASL and see what I get, right? So I'm, I said ASL is my keyword, um, and I'm just going to start there. Actually, I'm going to get rid of that for some, for some reason. That didn't even work out the way I wanted. Um, let me try it here really quick. ASL. Okay, so it's the same. I'm getting 14 opportunities. So here I just typed in ASL. I didn't even spell out American Sign Language, right? And as I come through, I can start finding opportunities that maybe I wish I had won. But these, uh, the reason there's 14 opportunities is because Sam is defaulting to looking in the future. I don't want that. I wanna see contracts that have been awarded. So I'm gonna say down here, see where it says status, active and inactive. I want both. And I wanna change the notice type to awarded. 
So down here at the bottom is awarded notice. And now when I do this, I got 104 opportunities or uh, 104 contracts that were awarded that I could start looking at to say, are they anything like I might want? And so I'm gonna pick a couple from different places. I don't know what this one is. And so I don't care, I'm gonna move past it. This next one here says ASL. And then I see ASL for card services. I like those and they're two different places. So I'm gonna pick them both. I just open them in a different tab for a second. I'm gonna keep coming down. This is language service, but I'm gonna move on for a minute. I want something, oh, there it is. It does say, but I already got FEMA. So let's go to VA. So here's American Sign Language. And let me see, here's Department of Army. This is perfect because I wanna get into the Army. Um, actually, let me just jump to the Army and see what we got here. So what I'm trying to do is to find my competitors so I can go see more of the awards. The first thing I did was went into Sam and said, let me see some awards here. And this is a pretty quick, easy way for me to do it. Now I'm going to scroll down through this award notice that I opened. And right here, I'm able to see um, the award details. And what I'm always looking for, I don't care about anything else but the UEI. So this UEI is what I care for. And um, now I'm going to come over here to USA Spending. Inside of USA Spending, again, I'm going to go pretty fast on this part uh, so I can maximize what I can show you. Right here is recipient. I'm going to put their information in, hit enter. And now when I hit search, I don't know what I'm going to see, by the way. All of this is live. None of it is. I know the process, but none of the results are prepared. So um, what I'm looking at here, the first thing I'm looking at is just to see are they winning a decent amount of money. So this company actually is not winning a lot of money. I'm instantly going to go away from them. Uh, thank you, but no thank you. So I'm going to reset that search. I'll leave USA Spending open. I'll close this guy for a minute. I'll come back here. I'm looking for competitors. Remember, I'm not I'm not initially looking for opportunities. I'm looking for competitors that are winning a decent amount in my space so that I can start going after it. So here's the UEI. I'm going to go back here. Um, let me change this to like this really quick. I'm going to I'm just setting up my search a little bit. There we go to make it easier for me to show you. Um, I just said, show me the last four fiscal years. And so now what I'm looking in, it's still kind of a million dollars. I'm not really seeing a lot. Um, I'm going to reset that search. I'm going to get rid of this guy and we'll come back here. And so as, as you see what I'm doing, right, I'm coming down. Here's national interpreters. Let's see if we can find this. As you come down and you start looking, these guys are not doing too well. That's funny. I should have saved my search from earlier because I had a really good one. Uh, there's Veterans Affairs. Let me find a couple of these. Now I'm wishing I had saved my search. I'm going to skip that one. I look at this one. So let's take these guys um, and come back here, reset that search. And then submit the search. Man, I'm losing my traction. Sometimes, by the way, it's just the way it is. It's uh, <laughs> something that happens when you start looking through. I was doing really well before I came into today's training with these. Let me just go to NASA really quick. Um, but you see this idea. In a minute, we're going to find the opportunities. It doesn't just pop up immediately. So I'm looking at some of these guys. Let me look at the winner here. Um, so this is 20 million. Let me see what we got. Here's hoping I can find it on this time. <laughs> That's funny. So let's change this up a little bit. Let's just head into um, let's just head into USA spending and I'll show you another way that you can do this because that one wasn't quite working for me. Uh, I'm gonna reset this search and I'm gonna do ASL searching here. Uh, so let's do ASL and let's just start with that and see what we can get. And then, so there's 3000. What I'm really looking for, I want that language though. I want that keyword that I'm looking for. Um, translation services. I'm going to come back here. Show me American Sign Language really quick so I can copy it. By the way, in live training, boy, it shouldn't be this, uh, it shouldn't be this difficult for me to find uh, American Sign Language, but it is. And so we just call it what it is, right? American Sign Language. Try this again. 
Okay, so if I come in here and look at this, I can come to categories and I can see the agencies that are awarding some of these services. Um, I can change this category to recipients. And in recipients, I can see who's doing a huge amount of work. And so I see these interpreting companies. And so um, we start looking at a few more. Let me look at this. Let me just see which one looks good. Um, I'll just start at the top and see who these guys are. So if I come in here and these guys aren't making a lot of money, I'm looking for the ones, oops, looking for the ones that are making money. Okay, so these guys are making 34 million. They were making some money before. Um, and so I can see they were winning some contracts and I can see where they're winning contracts. And then I would need to chase them down. It's the same kind of exercise, right? As I come in here and I'm looking at, um, let me go to USA Spending again, just for these guys. By the way, one of the reasons this is great is because the reality is um, it's not always easy. And if you can get a pattern around this, like somewhere along the lines, what I'm trying to show you is screw it up on me. Let me go back and look at my keywords really quick. Um, I'm gonna try translations again. And this time, uh, I'm just going to look again on this one with a keyword. So let's just try deaf for a second and see if I can pull up. So here I've got 3,200 um, awards, right? Theoretically, this is in, these are awards that are in um, deaf communication access. And so as I look forward, and I can look over here if I wanted to start looking at it, like right here is sign language, $3 million contract for sign language. Here's another one. So I can see these coming up and I can see them winning. I'm able to start finding these contracts and I can decide on clicking on, now these vendors, it's a fun thing, right? You have to just keep going through the exercise. But here I can find this company is winning about uh, five to $7 million on average over a long period of time, right? And so for them, I would wanna be chasing down their contracts. Let me try this one last one before I switch to another slide. Um, let me grab their UEI. By the way, so uh, I switched, right? This is really important to track on. I was looking for ASL, American Sign Language, and it wasn't happening. And, uh, and that it is what it is, right? There are ASL ones in there. I just was stumbling during live here. But I switched it up because I have my second keyword. I say, let me le look for uh, deaf or hard of hearing. There's other keywords I could have. But when I did deaf, that was more than enough for me to find um, a good amount of companies. I can even find the vehicles that are uh, out there being used. But if I come back and I say, well, let me look at this company, then I'm just going right back to this stage that I was showing you a minute ago. And again, I bet you this company is not going to have a ton of, of stuff. Um, but if I run search, right, I can see they've got 197 contracts. If I begin to filter it down, I can start seeing which ones are they winning that are um, sign language compared to something else. So over here, look at this. I just found all these sign language opportunities. It took me a little bit. I mean, literally, it's a little embarrassing for me that I, I like it wasn't coming out of the gate, but it was good that it showed you that even me as experienced as I am, took me 10 minutes to get this around. But now I've got the words in the right direction. I'm starting to get it clicking and uh, I don't feel all of the pressure of you looking at me. Um, and I'm able to start finding these, right? These opportunities are huge. My customer I know deals with a lot uh, smaller contracts. Let's say they're under 100,000, so they deal with a lot of under $100,000 contracts. They'll be very attracted to these contracts that are 200,000, 2 million, 5 million. And that was one piece, right? And I can go back and do more of those. Um, one other way, just to show you, if you haven't seen FPDS, and, and this is always fun too. So there's three main tools I'm looking at. I'm looking at SAM.gov, USA Spending, and FPDS. And they all come at it from different angles, right? So we, uh, we use all three of them, not just one. And so if I just take the same pattern and say deaf for, for a second, if I come in here and I'm lo looking for it, and I'm going to sort it by date signed, um, if I'm looking at something and I, uh, it's funny. So these deaf services, deaf accesses are the name of companies. They're all zero, which kind of is not helpful. But if I look here on one of these opportunities, right? I was looking for, and let me just make sure this is a, um, so uh, here, SLI is another thing, sign language interpretation, right? So I know it's interpretation. The reason this is helpful, not only can I find the contract, right? I'm trying to find the contract, 
Um, but I can also find the NAICS code, right, that they're using here. And as I look at more and more opportunities, I can make sure that I know all of the different NAICS codes different agencies would use. Um, in addition to that, I can uh, up here, if I want to start pursuing, which I'm going to talk to you really quickly about, like right here, look at this. I can see it's a $600,000 contract, but um, up here, I can find out who the contracting officer usually is. I don't want to go too far into this, but this right here where it says A days, that is the name of somebody. And it, when I do this, it probably is the first initial last name. And so if I go to uh, Google, which I'm not going to do at the moment because really who knows what it's going to do, but I would just go in there and say, look, I'm looking for, um, I don't know who this is with the VA, I guess, but if I'm looking for these guys, right, can I find them out there? And, um, and I can use that first initial last name. But the big thing is I'm able to find this person's contract and then I can look at more and more contracts. One of the things I notice is this is, see, this is a, uh, this company, they're not small. And I'm able to see that and it's only a $600,000 contract. This is what I mean by going to take it. I'm going to go to the contracting officer and say, hey, you already are offering the services or buying the services. We're a small business. We're a woman owned small business. We're an 8 day small business, whatever it is. We can do this work. We've been doing it for decades. We'd love to support you. At the very least, I can know who to have the conversation with. Um, so let me switch back over to my slides really quick. By the way, before I just switch, uh, people ask me how they can work with me. There's three ways you can work with me. Keep coming back to the training. Go to my website, buy courses that we have over there. We have two. Or if you're ready and you're doing like, let's say, two million or more, we have a workshop for you. I'm going to go really fast through that. You can look at our website for more. But here's what I wanted you to remember after you find the contract, what do you do? Um, the first thing is start with this unqualified list of opportunities. I call it unqualified because you haven't done a lot of research. You just found it on FPDS or USA Spending, et cetera, and you put it into a spreadsheet, let's say. You just got a bunch of them here. Then the next idea is you want to do enough research to identify which ones of those are slam dunk. I thought it was good, but then I found out it's uh, ASL, sign language, in Japan or somewhere, right? And it's like, well, we don't know, do OCONUS. That one's out. But these other ones that are remaining are what we call slam dunk, especially if you stay tight to your keyword. So you add those to your sales pipeline so that you can start tracking all of those different opportunities. You're trying to manage the workload. Um, so clearly it would prioritize them just as something as simple as when do they expire? Because these are all expiring contracts. When do they expire? Let's go after the first ones first, right? And then the last thing is start capture management so that you can pursue each one of those opportunities for the win. Just like I mentioned, that's a $600,000 opportunity that was being done by a large business. I'm going to go introduce myself to the small business professional and the contracting officer. I'm going to try, right? I'm going to get in there to say, hey, can we teach you what we do? By the way, we're interested in this thing when it comes up for recompete. That kind of activity um, you want to start doing on the opportunities you find. So here's what I want you to remember as you uh, finish up today's training, go do this yourself, right? I did it live and I had a couple of hiccups. Well, so will you, right? When you're trying to figure it out, you're gonna take a few steps to figure out what your uh, what words work best, et cetera. So know the keywords in your next code that you wanna start looking at to find your competitors so that you can find all the opportunities they've won. Um, and then search on those keywords and NAICS looking for your competitors. Uh, and then the last thing is I would set yourself a goal of, I want to find 10 opportunities. So I just found 10 with that one company. I might make it a little harder saying, I want to find 10 opportunities with three different vendors. Um, so I'm going across different areas. When you do this, you'll start finding opportunities so much easier. And, and you don't have to look out 24 months. There's opportunities expiring in six months in this fiscal year that you can look at and go, is, is there still time to pursue them? All right. So as you head into your day, just follow those steps. Let me know how it goes. If you got a question, put it in the comments. Happy to try to answer it and get back to you. As you move forward on this and as you move forward in government contracting, just remember that government contracting, it's not a secret. It's just a process. I'll see you in the next training.